Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Reactor Toots. My name is Peter. We're going to be talking about delay lines and how awesome they are. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the delay aspect today. And first thing we're going to do is go into built-in module, go down to the delay category, and we see a bunch of different options. There's a lot of fun things to uh, experiment with here. We have multi-tap, diffuser delays for reverb. We have some grain delays and a unit delay for filter design or for techie stuff. We're going to be focusing on the single tap. And it's a very simple module. It defaults to red, which is kind of funny. Um, you can use this with event type signals or audio signals. So if you're designing a sequencer and wanted to make some kind of swing parameter or some kind of delay in the quantization or of the timing of notes or signals, using a simple delay would be totally cool and hip. Um, but for now, we're gonna use an audio signal. Let's see, when we hook up an audio signal to it, it changes colors. Hook this up to the outputs, and then when we check out the delay input, it says uh, the delay times in milliseconds, so let's create a control for that. Defaults to a value of zero to a thousand milliseconds, which is totally cool. Um, if we start playing something, we hear, or you can hear me hitting the key and the audio signal is delayed. Um, so that's all well and good. Uh, we would ideally want a combination of both the dry signal and the wet signal, so to speak, the unaffected audio and the delayed audio. And we want to be able to control the loudness between them. So to do that, we can go into built-in module, signal path, crossfade because we're essentially crossfading between the two signals. Um, I usually put the dry signal in the top and then the delayed signal in the bottom. And if we hook this up here, let me move this up there. And we see that there is an X input, which basically means crossfade. I don't know why it's black, which leads me to believe that you can hook up an audio signal there <laughs> and do some crazy um, amplitude modulation effects. But for now, let's just right click, oops, and hit create control. And you see it gives us a fader, which is super lame. Knobs are better. There we go. I'm gonna rename it to D slash W dry wet. And then we can hear hear that it's slowly adjusting the levels of both the dry and the wet signal. Cool. So it doesn't really sound very interesting. It's because that there's no feedback loop and feedback loop um, as a concept can transcend subjects like none other. But um, for the purposes of today, we're going to be talking about feedback loop in the audio domain. And the principle behind feedback is that we take the output of the delay process and feed it back into the delay process to change it even further. Uh, in this case, like I said, we're using a delay line, so that's what it results in. You can have a feedback loop in distortion or, 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 or chorusing or any kind of DSP effect. Uh, we're gonna be using it for delay lines and to build a feedback loop, we need an add and a multiply module for reasons that I will explain to you. So we're basically going to be taking a signal that is being delayed uh, and putting it back into this delay line and it, with uh, incoming audio information, basically like more notes that you're playing. You want to be able to have everything delayed. You don't want just one audio buffer of, of, you know, 2000 milliseconds and that be it. Um, so that's what the addition is for. You want to combine the output of your delay line with uh, new audio coming in and then attaching it here, but do not attach it yet because we forgot a crucial aspect of the delay line is that we want to be able to adjust how loud 
our delayed signal is feeding back into the delay line. Um, if we didn't have this parameter, it would just, well, we would only hear a single delay and it would be of equal loudness and it wouldn't be interesting at all. So uh, we take the output of the delay line, hook it up to the multiply object and we use our scaling knowledge that we talked about a couple tutorials ago. Feedback. It defaults from zero to one, which is super nice. Uh, we want to probably pull this back a little bit to like 0.6. Take this scaled audio, attach it to the addition module, which combines this now scaled fed back audio, new audio that we want to put into our delay line. And then we hook it up there and then we should hear delayed audio in its true fashion, which we do. Feedback is one word. So kind of expanding on what, what I mentioned earlier, um, if we left this value at one, it would take the output of uh, the single delay at equal loudness and keep feeding it back in and feeding it and feeding it with new audio information. It just gets very loud. You get like a wall of noise effect, which, is, which could be really cool. See, it's the same exact loudness and this will last forever. Until we pull back and it starts decreasing, decreasing its amplitude ever so slightly. Because it's consistently being scaled each time it's going through this feedback loop. Very cool. Uh, if the same concept applies for values greater than one, and this is something that you 99% of the time don't want, don't want to do, is give a feedback parameter a value more than one Sometimes it could, be, it could be really cool if you're dealing with like distortion effects, but for a basic delay line, you can imagine what would happen if a value more than one, you know, it every time it would go through the feedback loop, it would increase in amplitude, and increase and increase and increase, and nothing would stop it until reactor breaks or your speakers blow up or your ears start to bleed. So for now, let's just leave it like this. It's just safer for everybody. Um, so we have a mono delay right now. To make it stereo is easy as pie. We just take the key components of the delay line itself, duplicate it by hitting Apple D. Maybe put it somewhere else on the screen. We want to be able to duplicate the dry wet crossfade module as well because we're going to be crossfading between now the right signal or the I'm sorry, the right channel in addition to the left channel at the same time. So we keep the Adjustment knob the same, but different modules per um, per audio channel. I hope that makes sense. Um, so now, since this is a stereo audio source, I'd be hooking up the right audio channel into there, and then hooking this up here. Yeah, cool we would want to create a different delay parameter for the right channel now. And if we play a note, we should hear stereo delay. Oh, we do, that sounds sick. Um, nice. So that is stereo delay in under nine minutes, 10 minutes. Uh, we're going to be expanding on this concept a lot because there's a lot to talk about when we discuss delays. So stick around. I'll probably have a few more videos up today. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you later.